Ladies and gentlemen, the Shred Gaming Center.com video, we're going to be discussing the PlayStation 4 along with mandatory installs, caching, and what is known as the Play Go system, as well as the size of the PlayStation 4's hard drive. So before we start jumping super into this, let's discuss what the Play Go system is, and we're going to do this from Mark Cerny, who is of course the console's architect. He says, and I quote, the concept is you download just a portion of the overall data and start your play session, and you continue your play session as the rest downloads in the background. Okay, half quote, we know about that part, we know that Sony have planned this. So in other words, for example, with Killzone, you will download a set portion, apparently it's about 7.5 gigs, and then from there, you can be troll -lo 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 -lo, play the game while the remainder of the data downloads fine, understood, and great. However, the Play Go system is a little bit different and is, and I quote, two separate linked system. The other one is actually to do with the Blu-ray drive. So um, what he said is, so what we do as the game's accessed the Blu-ray disc is we take any data that is accessed and we put it on the hard drive and then if there's some idle time we go ahead and copy the remaining data to the hard drive and what that means is after an hour or two the game is actually on the hard drive and you have access you have dramatically quicker loading and you have the ability to do some high, str high speed streaming now out of quote it seems that this is mandatory. In other words, you do not get a choice in this. It is a prerequisite. Why? Well, it's pretty simple, actually. Um, as it turns out, Blu-ray drives have improved over time, right? We know that. But, as any PC gamer will tell you, um, hard drive size is very important. In other words, you have a lot of data, um, so, for example, you need to fill up 5 or 6 gigabytes, which is the size, basically, of the memory available to games in the PlayStation 4, not 8, because obviously some is reserved system. So, let's say 6 gigs. You can't rely exclusively, especially on certain titles, which have a heavy emphasis in an open-world environment, to start streaming that from the Blu-ray drive. Um, you may remember uh, that the... PlayStation 3 actually had similar issues. Um, when you, for example, load up The Last of Us, it takes a long ass time to load. Um, and who could forget the rather infamous Metal Gear Solid, where, of course, Snake would be sitting there between sections of the game, basically smoking, and you could pretty much go to the toilet, make yourself a four-course meal, come back, basically solve world hunger, and still be having time to pretty much set, settle yourself in while the game loads and that's because a huge amount of data is basically being copied from the blu-ray to the system so i know what you're going to say this sounds a bit strange well basically the premise is kind of similar in some ways to um the mid 2000 era of pc gaming um Back then, what you would basically do is you would have a CD or a DVD, you would install the game via that, and at some points actually certain games allowed like a full install or a medium install, but pretty much now, well pretty much at this point, games on the PC are fully installed, in other words there's nothing left on the media because, you know, even back then on DVD drives it just wasn't fast enough to keep up with hard drives. So basically what happens is you just left the disc in the tray for, to authenticate. In other words, so that you don't take the disc around your friend Bob's house, your friend, you know, Sarah's house, and so on. Let them install the game and have basically infinite copies. So in other words, the disc now acts as an authentication method, which is fine, obviously. Um, so this immediately brings up another concern. And I'm sure you can get well, guess what this is. Hard drive space. Now... I've been pretty critical, actually, of the 500 gigabyte drive in both the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. Now, admittedly, you are free to remove the PlayStation 4's hard drive, and you could put in, say, a one terabyte drive or whatever you want. You could put in an SSD. 
up to you. I mean, you know, you could put in even a smaller drive if you want, but I'm not sure why you'd do that. But regardless, you could if you so wish. Obviously, there is a certain amount of space. I don't know what it is offhand. In fact, I don't think it's been announced that is reserved for the operating system. But even so, you're probably going to get, you know, the majority of the space um Ignoring the fact, of course, the way hard drive space works and all that, you're never going to get 500 gigabytes. But, regardless, you're probably going to get, you know, 10, maybe 12 games in. Now, this, of course, is an arbitrary figure. In other words, it highly depends on how big the game actually ends up being when it's placed on the disc. And so you might get a situation where, say, a fighting game or a game that's pretty small might be only, you know, 10, 5, 10 gigs, whatever. Or you might get another game that's 40 gigs plus. In other words, there's no way to tell. Each game is going to uh, vary quite a lot. But let's assume that the average game, you know, most games are going to be like between 30 and 40 gigs. You're going to be getting around the dozen mark on the hard drive, which I'd not exactly consider to be a plethora. So, the option, of course, does give some benefits. One of the primary benefits is that it makes the system quieter. In other words, it's no longer reading from the Blu-ray drive. It also cuts down wear and tear on the Blu-ray drive, which obviously is considerably harder to replace for most users than the hard drive. Because the Blu-ray, you could simply, well, you can't really just open it up and replace it. If you're just an average user, most people are going to be pretty frightened and slash apprehensive to open up their brand new spanky console to replace the drive. On the other hand, it's pretty simple from what uh, the reports are to replace the PlayStation 4's hard drive. So that's a good thing. It's also, of course, a requirement to maintain relatively good speeds. Now... There are concerns, for example, how the system is going to manage the cache. In other words, how easy it is for users to delete the cache and so on. That's not been completely and utterly answered yet. One thing is for certain, in my personal opinion, um, I'm unsure if 500 gigs is going to be enough for those people who plan to own a lot of games or be the type of people who switch a lot of games. Like, For example, if you're one of those people who buy a game um, and you maybe have like a couple of games going at the same time. You play one game. Okay, I'm done with this. I'm sticking it on eBay or whatever you do with it. Cool. You'll probably be okay with a smaller drive. On the other hand, if you're one of those people who like to play quite a few games and you like to have multiple games, especially if you're an online gamer and therefore you might want to play Battlefield, you might want to play some Killzone, you might have some other titles on the line as well then you might have some problems because obviously if you've got a slower connection um, for example then you might not want to wait to download a huge ass file so I imagine for people with slower connections unsurprisingly I know it's not exactly a shock but you're probably going to want to stick with disk based medium for uh, the foreseeable future anyway I think that's just about it on this particular video hopefully you've enjoyed it I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.